So, Mines MC has uh, just run its first series. Was it any good? I'll give you my full review inside. Revelator Alf. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf, the channel about motorcycle life in all its forms. Please subscribe and hit the notifications bell for all the latest videos because there's a lot more coming and you certainly won't want to miss out on those. Well, leave loads of comments and um, give the video a thumbs up if you will and share it amongst all your friends that would be really appreciated well enough of that let's just talk about uh, Mayans MC the first series that has just uh, finished uh, well just been made available in the UK I know it's run its course in the US um, it's still being shown on BBC 2 at Saturday nights about 10.40 uh, they have uh, uh, double bill episodes but it's uh, fully available still right now on BBC iPlayer which I've just had a binge watch of uh, which I was most intrigued to watch anyway so this is the post uh, Sons of Anarchy era uh, post uh, Jack's Teller from the Sons of Anarchy uh, obviously uh, committing suicide on the uh, highway um, so it still features some of the original characters from Sons of Anarchy in very small cameo roles um, they, the Mayans uh, motorcycle club from Oakland the lead character there Marcus Alvarez um, he also plays quite a few cameo roles uh, within this first series of the Mayans MC so whilst it is a spin-off and it is about the motorcycle life it is a totally separate genre and a totally separate uh, feel and flavor to it first of all sons of anarchy was more centered on the motorcycle club mines mc has pretty much has two separate stories really there is the motorcycle club life if you like and then there is the drug mexican drug cartel life as well so there's two and that's a big bulk of their business uh, drug uh, muling if you would so that's probably why you know we've got this intersection of stories now the story of Minds NC really centers around three main characters within the motorcycle club uh, that is uh, easy uh, Ezekiel Reyes his brother his older brother Angel uh, Angel Reyes is a established member of the Mayans MC. Ezekiel is the uh, a prospect. Okay, uh, their father uh, Edward James uh, Olmos. Uh, he was actually a very famous actor. You might remember him from Miami Vice days as the captain in charge of the uh, of the squad. Uh, so he's done lots of other things as well. So those are the three main characters from the most from that family within the motorcycle club and then the other story is of the Galindo uh, drug cartel so lots of lives will intersect first of all the Rares brothers uh, uh, Edward James Olmos's character his wife was murdered some eight years previously that kind of created a situation where the younger brother, Easy, then went on a revenge mission to try and find the killer. Anyway, found the killer, but got away and then uh, unfortunately accidentally shot uh, a uh, off-duty policeman or undercover policeman uh, who uh, later died. So he was sent to prison. Then the DEA got involved with him because of his links with his brother and um, the motorcycle club and obviously the official affiliation with the drug cartel to see if they can gather information on the drug cartel to lead to a prosecution. So they released him from prison to go undercover, if you like, in the club, uh, the motorcycle club, to not inform on the club but to inform on the drug cartel very very twisted um, storyline but it follows quite quite easily the younger brother also has split loyalties because the wife of the drug cartel leader um, mr galindo uh, his wife was also a previous uh, or prior uh, girlfriend uh, of uh, the younger brother easy so there's a connection there so all the lives are intertwined now the first couple of uh, episodes, it was a little bit slow to take off, I thought. It was more, as I say, you kind of introducing the characters, uh, the club life and the Galinda cartel. But really, and this pretty much goes up to episode eight, it is mostly about the, the drug cartel. And yes, the, there is the club life as well. Um, 
There's also a side issue with these rebels that are starting to uh, raise their heads in in Mexico, causing problems for the club and also predominantly for the drug cartel, the Glinda cartel. This, at the same time, there are certain members within the Mines MC who are going, going behind the back of the MC to help out this movement that is against the drug cartel. And the problem is there's a bit of a love interest there as well, but there's also a bit of sympathy uh, for the devil that you don't know, I suppose, as well. The, the location is right on the southern border of, uh, sort of, you know, California, Baja California, right on the um, on the border between America and Mexico. There's, you know, talk about, you know, drug running in, in underground tunnels below the fence line or behind the wall, you know, which Trump is so uh, proud of. There's a lot, a lot of talk with about the DEA and the inner workings of the DEA and why they're trying to bring um, their their prosecution as well. So as I say, this first series is more about developing all the characters and explaining the storyline and the background. You know, it, it does progress quite along and it is a really good story actually. It really does develop into a really good story by the fifth and sixth episode. Then all the way to the tenth episode, that's when it really starts to kick off. And there's a bit, a bit of a twist right at the end, where in the tenth episode, um, the younger brother Reyes finally finds out who killed his mother, and he comes face to face with him across a crowded uh, uh, car park within the club uh, compound, and it's actually one of the former Sons of Anarchy uh, members, Happy, who was actually a hitman for hire in a previous life. So their lives and both clubs who have been at a truce since the Jack Teller death days um, have kind of possibly going to come up against each other again. So some interesting thoughts really. First of all, uh, let's go with the main character from the Oakland, Marcus Alvarez, who is known as the, the godfather, El Padrino, El Padrino of the club. Um, and he kind of plays cameo roles and he's more of a conciliary to the club um, but the club and club president are obviously separate entities as well but what you've got to what i found really interesting in the very last episode um he decides to walk away from the club to go and work for the drug cartel as a kind of another conciliary because they've had their own internal fallout and then they've also made an alliance with this um it's uprising movement within the Mexico, so all's kind of all well and good. Um, but you think, well, actually, you can't just walk away from your club, surely. I thought that was the whole point. You can't just walk away. And not just like that. You need a bigger vote than just to suddenly just be able to down tools or down your jacket and away you go. So I found that a little bit strange. I wasn't sure how... I know it does happen that you know you can leave in good standing or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's very rare. Maybe they were making a special case for it. I don't know. I also thought that the it was a little bit too it was a bit too convoluted at times. You know, you had two or three members within the club who were actually going behind the club's back to help out uh, this rival faction uh, from you know Mexico, and it didn't really explain how they more met each other, how the the club members got linked up with this uh, this faction, so that was a bit um, a bit a bit dubious, a bit of a tenuous link, I thought. Also, the inner workings of the DAA and Justice Department as well. There is actually a return for Lincoln Potter, who was in the third series of Sons of Anarchy, who tried to take them all down, and he's playing exactly the same conniving kind of weird uh, D, uh, Justice Department or assistant. Uh, attorney general I think his uh, title is uh, so he's going after the drug cartel and he's not and he's using uh, the Reyes brothers to try and get in on uh, the cartel and also then try and make a deal with the cartel to go against this uprising movement so again you know there's lots of crossing stories here so it's it's one of those things but his his character is a great character and it kind of added a lot more depth to the you know the whole storyline the whole plot line it is one of those things where the series where there are lots of mini stories going on and they all come together right at the end and that's a, a you know the test of a good storyteller i think and kurt Sutter, you know and Ogden james are definitely you know great storytellers whether this is 
at the same level that Sons of Anarchy was. I'm not 100% sure. So I've already remarked in previous videos, I think whilst they are very true to the kind of Latino flavor of the, uh, the background of the, the club and the area, within the sort of titles and within the, the music, a lot of the music, certainly those early episodes and the title music, I just didn't think it had enough of that Latin flavour, you know, certainly of a Mayans club and certainly from that, that area with a fictional name, Santa Padre, the, the border town. So I think there's a little bit more that they could have done there. But uh, in saying that, as it progressed through the uh, episodes towards the end of the series, then there was more and more of this being injected and you got more and more details of the other club members some of those other club members you will recognise from other programmes. They've made cameo roles or they've played one or two episodes. So there are some familiar faces in there. Uh, the, one of the characters who plays their next uh, veteran army uh, or marine veteran, uh, like a sniper, Coco, he uh, was in Lethal Weapon uh, TV series for the first series and a few episodes as well. He's been in a few other things. Um, a couple of the other... Uh, senior members were also in, um, you know, Mexican-related uh, TV program or theme programs. But also, um, there's also a bit of a link there with a couple of characters who are sort of Amer Native American Indians, as well. And, and there, you know, there, there's some links with uh, local tribes as well. So there is there is a definite crossover, and there's lots of pl uh, faces that you might have seen if you don't know their names. Um, in re all their re the actors' names, I should say, but there are definite faces there, so that adds to the sort of continuity. There's, but the, th the three main characters within the club, two brothers, and the father who was out of the club, I should say that. Um, that family, w then the motorcycle club itself, then the drug cartel, and now this uprising movement, uh, El Salvador. Is, um, there's four four main parties there, and then obviously you've got the the DAA, DA, and Justice Department, who are all part of that as well. You know, it's a very busy, very, it's a very busy storyline right now. Now, what is gonna, the next uh, series going to be about? Well, it's a very fluid thing. Even Kurt Sutter has come out right now and saying he's not too sure how they're going to write it because they've ended it with um, the younger brother, Easy Reyes, knowing who killed his mother. And that set off a whole string of events which led them to where they are now. So now they have to work out how they're going to, you know, spin this story, how it's going to develop. Are the two motorcycle clubs going to go to war over this? Is it going to be a personal thing? We don't know. And I don't think Kurt Sutter even knows right now. Or Elgin James, you know, who are going to be writing it. Was it a good first series? I think it was. I think it got better and better as it went on. Was it as good as Sons of Anarchy? I don't think, whilst it was as brutal in places as Sons of Anarchy, or possibly even more so, I don't think it was fast paced, it didn't have that certain energy that Sons of Anarchy did. However, towards the end it did, and I, th I thought it was really good. I, for one, am actually really looking forward to the, the second series when it's due to come out uh, next year. Uh, so I assume they'll be filming it later this year and then it'll be released uh, you know, towards the end of this year and early uh, next year. Um, but it was, it, it was a bit of a slow start but it got a lot better. I think it's, it's going to add a different dimension to the motorcycle club scene. Uh, there's going to be, you know, the, the bikes are different, there's a new look to it. There's, the, the bikes are very much Latin American sort of feel to it. Um, you know the sort of Latino bike culture is very much you know big ape ang angers all that kind of stuff so there is that kind of aspect to it as well it's lots of chrome lots of color on the bikes you know that's good where Sons of Anarchy was all black wasn't it really lots of black bikes um, so you know there's there's a more flamboyant side of it and but there's it is a different pace to it as well but it should be better it should be but it should be interesting to see and possibly turn out to be even better if they persist with it. I think there's a lot more possibility of development of storylines. If you think you know the biggest storyline right now is going to be President Trump and Mexico and America and the wall, the building of the wall, 
just imagine what can you know what that can generate in terms of storylines so i think they're going to be looking at that as, as a definite um sort of side angle or, or certainly a, an influence into the different stories but anyway so that was it this is my review of the first series as i say it is very convoluted there's lots of storylines crossing all over and it did take 10 episodes for it to really you know bond together and, and come together as a, as a series i think it sets it up fantastically for series two i can't wait for it I say, you know, I just hope, hope that people don't start running around with Mayans MC back patches on their jackets now and all that sort of nonsense, as they did with the Sons of Anarchy, it's all a bit... But they're already selling it on Amazon, it's already been sold, I mean, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, well, there you go, I mean, I, I, not for me, eh? but there you go, anyway, but say, in terms of a TV series, yeah, it wasn't too far-fetched, it was... You know, it was it was decent enough. It was a good storylines, brutal where it needed to be. You know, pretty. Oh my God, that I bet that hurt. You know, and, and some other places as well. Right. Well, hope you enjoyed this uh, review. Hope you enjoyed the program. Check it out. It's still BBC Two in the UK, Saturday nights, ten forty, or it's on BBC iPlayer, uh, or wherever you are in the world. Just check it. Out. I'm sure it'll be available on whatever. Uh, I think it's available on Amazon right now in the US. Uh, that you can download on Prime, I believe, I'm not 100% sure. Right, but anyway, please subscribe to the channel, leave loads of comments, let me know what you think of uh, Minds MC if you have seen it, and uh, or is it better or worse than Sons of Anarchy? I don't know, I, I still think Sons have got it right now, but it's very close. I think Minds in Season 2 has a good chance of taking over Sons of Anarchy, in my opinion. Sons of Anakin, unfortunately, after season three, got a little bit silly in places. Just got too far fetched, I think. While so great storylines, it was, it really was entertainment as opposed to any kind of reflection on, on real life. Certainly, the life that, you know, most people know. You know, and I suppose if you're in that kind of world, which I'm not, you know, but, but even so, very very uh, far-fetched you know the, you'd have the army down on you or you'd have you know full-scale prosecutions or what happens in real life if that were the case but there you go anyway please subscribe hit the notifications bell leave loads of comment give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you on the next video whenever that is cheers now